Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and this will be a demonstration of droplet generation simulation using ANSYS Fluent. This is a typical microfluidics analysis problem, and uh, we're going to use ANSYS Fluent to do this. So this is a workbench environment. We have a wide range of capabilities available. I have a pre-generated geometry here of a simple 2D microfluidics device. So I loaded it in Design Modeler. The reason I use Design Modeler is that it pr provides nice parametric geometry generation capabilities. You also can freely use any of the major CAD tools such as Siemens NX, Creo, or SolidWorks, or Katia. This is our geometry. So we're going to have uh, oil coming in from one side and water coming in the other side. Have a little throat here and it's a 2D, 2D simulation so microfluidics drops will be generated once it crosses the throat. We can generate a preliminary mesh, but I'm going to switch to the microns unit and specify an element size of 25 microns. This gives us nice, uniform, dense mesh on the entire model. With any fluid flow, there's a significant amount of uh, shear near the walls, so it's useful to always put in some inflation layers. So this will be my inflation area and selecting all of the edges, I'll deselect, I'll unselect the inlet and the outlet. Let's do five layers of inflation. This provides more accurate near wall resolution for my mesh. In addition, we want to specify our boundary conditions, or at least give names to them. So this will be my oil inlet. These two areas. Oh, I just noticed I made a mistake on this edge here. We don't want inflation layers on the edges themselves. So let's finish selecting, naming my regions. water inlet, and this will be the outlet. Let's go ahead and generate another mesh. So this is a fairly small mesh, it should run really fast, only 6,000 nodes, um, about 6,000 elements with boundary layer resolution. From there, we can go ahead and start our fluent analysis. So we can choose to do a single core or a couple of cores. The, the model is so small that it'll run fairly quickly no matter what we choose here. It probably doesn't make much, diff much uh, improvements if we try to increase greatly the number of cores used for the analysis. This is a fluent user interface. Uh, we'll be doing a transient simulation. And uh, let's go ahead and start setting up the models. We do want to turn on volume of fluid, VOF scheme. There'll be two Eulerian phases. One will be oil, the other will be water. We're going to use the implicit volume fraction calculations. And let's do a interfacial anti diffusion to ensure we have a nice sharp interface between all of the materials. Once that's done, it opens up our phases and phase interactions. In most microfluidics problems, the problem is often highly surface tension driven. So we do want to turn on a surface tension model with wall adhesion. Uh, we can specify either a constant, a uh, user defined, uh, or no uh, surface tension coefficient here. So I'm going to put in a value of 0 0.005 newtons per meter for my surface tension. And that's it for my analysis here. The next step is we want to add some materials into our simulation. So the materials we want to add are water and oil. So let's look for water. This is our liquid water. Copy it over. And you can see that it 
copy this. Let's do this one. Okay. Right, so we have water in here and we want to add oil as our other phase. So we can call our new phase oil and we'll have uh, constant density and viscosity We also don't need this fluid one material in there. So now we have oil and water. We will make water our primary phase and we'll make oil our secondary phase. Okay, the next step is we want to assign our boundary conditions. So because we've named our boundaries and this fluid automatically pulled it in, so we just need to assign the velocity at each location and the property. Okay, so on my oil inlet, we want to ensure to specify an inlet velocity of 0 0.0103, and I will want to make sure that it's oil, which is my phase two. For my water inlet, I'm going to specify the same velocity. But here my phase two, which is oil, will be zero, and that ensures that my phase one, which is water, is uh, applied. The outlet here is a pressure outlet. So normal total pressure of zero. And the walls, we can specify a surface, a wall adhesion angle. In this case, I'm going to set an, a wall adhesion angle of 135 degrees and that specifies the appropriate surface tension behavior. So that's it for the analysis. It's going to be a transient simulation. Now we move down to uh, our solution methods. We're going to use the coupled solution algorithm with volume of fraction coupled as well. This allows us to get a faster convergence behavior. And I'll tune some of these other ones. So the gradient behavior, we're going to go with a Gauss green cell based um, Second order up, upwind volume fraction is compressive to ensure a sharp boundary, and we're going to use a bounded second order transient formulation. So these are nice settings that gives us a, a very sharp boundary while allowing us to take larger time steps. Okay, and next step is we want to initialize the analysis. So I'm going to do a standard initialization, calculation activities. I'm going to save it at every every five time steps. Um, and we can start running our simulation. So we can specify this as uh, using fixed test time step or variable time stepping. Um, Global court number, I'm going to shoot for a court number of five, and we'll start with a fairly small time step. The def default setting here is 1e to the minus five, so that's a pretty small time step. I'm going to let this run for 400 iterations, and off we go. Okay, the simulation is completed, so let's take a look at the results. We have our model here. Let's take a look into uh, the symmetry plane and look at the volume fraction. So here, let's have that repeating. We 
you see the droplet generation of oil droplets in the water. You can create a variety of videos from this, um, and there's various animation options. So in addition to looking at the bubble generation visually, we can also get some quantitative analysis. For example, I can put a point somewhere on the model, and from there we can create a graph of uh, the volume fraction, which represents the bubbles that goes across this point. So this is a chart. I'm going to do a transient histogram uh, at the point, and the Y will be volume fraction. So you can see we have the bubbles we generated re regularly along throughout the, the time of my analysis. We can also do a fast Fourier transform of this data, and that tells us the peak location. Uh, if we look into this value here, it tells me that my bulb is generated at a frequency of 36.8 hertz, and there's a certain special density involved as well. So this video shows you that in just a few quick minutes, you can have an analysis of a droplet generation in 2D um, in a microfluidics fluidics device. We can do the same thing in 3D. It'll take a little bit more time, or you can use more computers to, ha to solve the, that problem. Once you have this set up, you should notice that initially our because our geometry is parameterized, almost anything in this model can be parameterized as well on the output side. So I can easily create an expression, for example, that calculates my frequency. And you can put in some value here. I'll just give it a zero for now. And we can turn this into an output parameter. So by building input and output parameters using expressions, we can complete the analysis loop have ANSYS automatically generate changes to the model. That's what I did here. Uh, with ANSYS, the ANSYS workbench in CFD post, we can attach a script file that automatically extracts data. In this case, I wrote a script file to extract the bubble generation frequency. So in my parameter set, I have parameters for the geometry as well as the inlet velocity for oil and water, and I'm extracting the maximum frequency and amplitude for my droplet generation. This can then be pulled into a response surface optimization uh, process where we do a design of experiment. Here I'm varying each of the input parameters by 10% and ANSYS automatically ran a total of 25 simulations. These simulations and their results are saved in the design parameters. So I can go back to any design point, set that as current, and pull up a graphical data of all of the results generated. Based on these design points, we can then generate a response surface. The response surface interpolates across those 25 points to generate a 3D field view of how my throat length and throat width affects the amplitude of my um, pulse generation or the frequency of my pulse generation. Um, we can check other parameters as well. So maybe for the in, we want to look at the inlet and velocity of water and, and uh, oil. And now it shows me that for high frequencies, I want um, this will be more. The higher the flow rate, the higher the pulse generation frequency Moving my cursor along the surface here gives me more data on what's possible. Finally, we can go back and take a look at the optimization approach where here I can spe specify some sort of uh, optimization function. In this case, where I want to maximize frequency and amplitude, I get a trade-off plot. Um, in this case, I extracted a total of 3,000 points off of the design surface, off the response surface. And I'm looking at a trade-off trade -off plot to see to understand how frequency and amplitude changes. I want a very clean pulse generation, which means I want a, a high amplitude uh, 
uh, and I also want to generate more pulses. So you can see there's some sort of a brittle front over on the upper surface. That means that there are certain points where I can generate pulses that's very sharp, and very efficiently. Um, certainly, most of the data here is interpolated based on the response surface. We have various tools to further refine the response surface, or you can click on a point, look at the data here, and we can right click on that point and make this the design point to run that particular design. So if I want to compare these two, I can create design points based on these two points, run the simulation and visually check the data to see if it's correct. Um, there's a sensitivity plot to show that frequency is primarily dependent on the width of my throat to a lesser extent on the length and, and oil velocity, oil and water velocity. The amplitude is heavily dependent on my inlet oil velocity. So this allows you to make some, allows me to make some good design decisions. Uh, finally, there's a sample plot that allows me to look at all of the, da all of the data here. Uh, each parameter is specified as a column. So I can say if I want a particular frequency, so let's say we want a 30 hertz generation. That's kind of bracket the 30 hertz area. And we want a very sharp peak around 30 hertz. We can we have a series of design potential designs here. Maybe we want to keep the velocity low, and that allows us to pick out a couple of designs as potential uh, design points to try to simulate, and then obviously to build an experiment and test to make sure it's accurate. So once again, in a few minutes, you can quickly run through a large number of 2D analysis. You can do the DOE study and response service optimization to understand how changing parameters would affect your results. And based on those designs, you can validate, do a 3D simulation to confirm it, and then do prototyping. All of that can be done in uh, half a day to a day. The 2D analysis here takes a few minutes. A 3D analysis takes about half an hour. Hopefully that's with enough computation power, that should be sufficient for you to investigate your design in detail. That's the end for the presentation. If you're interested, you're welcome to contact us at singularityengineering.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.